have the conditions right, then they do thrive. You know, they want to grow. They're a vigorous vine. But there's just a few things you need to get right, and then it's not too hard. So what would be the ideal position for passion fruit? Well, you can't forget that passion fruit are actually a rainforest plant. They're an understory plant. They want to strive to get to the sun. So putting them somewhere where they can go up and over and then have a heap of sunlight, ideally north-west facing, you're going to have a happy vine. And really, looking at the way you've trained them, a pergola yeah. might be a better option than a fence. Absolutely. Then they're getting the sun on the top, not just up and down so that they're getting it one part of the day. You want to give it as much sun as you can. You wouldn't get much of a frost around here, would you? No, passion fruit definitely don't like frost, but they can survive in cold climates if you protect them from the frost. And it's very sheltered in this valley. Yeah, they don't like wind at all. Once you've chosen a suitable position, it's time to get planting. So you really want to break up the soil, make it nice and friable and loose so that the young baby roots can easily get out into the soil. Now, your soil is quite heavy, mm. so the mounding is, is to help drainage? That's right. All our vines are up on mounds, up on beds, raised beds. And in fact, the science is it's always better to plant them on a mound. And how about the season? Warm weather better than Definitely. cold weather? There's really no point planting when it's cold. They'll just sit there and do nothing. So if you plant it in spring, there's a good chance you'll get fruit in the first year. Absolutely. You should be getting fruit the next autumn. So here's our vine. It's a grafted vine, but if the home gardener, you could use either grafted or non-grafted. Something I really like about this one is it's got a great growth tip. It's really important to pick a good vine to start with. So if something that ends just in a big leaf like this, you don't want that. You want the little baby leaves and a good growth tip. And when you put it in the ground, it's going to keep growing. You really want it to be level with the ground. Now, you're not teasing the roots or fanning them out in any way. No, we don't mess with it at all. We just get it into the ground as, as quickly as possible, let those little baby roots get into the soil. We plant hundreds, obviously, but I would definitely plant two in the home garden. That improves pollination. Yeah, that's right. They, they do seem to like to have company. Now, you're planting them about three metres apart here. Yeah, but you don't need to do that in the home garden. A metre, a metre and a half would be fine. So we like to water it in with the seaweed solution and we also give it a good spray on the leaves with the same thing. Just helps with the transplant shock. Water it every day, at least for the first week, and then space it out, depending on your weather. And really make sure you water a nice wide area to encourage the roots out. It's really important to mulch. We like to use a grassy hay. And it's really important to keep the hay off the stem to prevent disease. At home, you might train them up using stake and ties or some trellis. But here, we use tape and string. So you shouldn't need to do anything more to the vine. It'll attach itself, cling on with its own tendrils, and just head straight for the sun. It'll say on the label of your vine if it's grafted or not. This one is a grafted vine. You can see the graft here. It's important to look for the lateral growth from the rootstock, which is below the graft. If you leave the lateral growth there, it'll take over and you won't get good fruit. So we come along and knock all the lateral growth off. A common complaint by gardeners is I've picked the fruit from the vine and it tastes bitter. Mm. Why? Passion fruit farmers only harvest fruit off the ground when it's perfectly ripe. OK, so if I leave them on the windowsill, it's not going to improve the quality or no, flavour? No, Once it's picked, that's it. It won't ripen anymore. So you're better to wait till it drops. Maybe pick it up every couple of days. If they're left on the ground too long, they'll rot. And another thing to keep in mind, Jerry, is that there's a difference between summer fruit and winter fruit. In the summer, they're sweeter because of sun. In the winter, they're a bit more tart. Right, right. 
Now, there's a phenomenon with passion fruit which science hasn't been able to answer. That's right, that's the full moon effect. And at many full moons, we get a really heavy drop of passion fruit. It's an industry-wide phenomenon and nobody knows why it happens. Fascinating. The thing I wanted to emphasise is don't overwater and don't over fertilise. Absolutely. In my experience, good compost and regular applications of seaweed is all they need for a good crop. That should be enough. The other thing we like to do is we prune them. Every spring we cut the crown back to about a metre diameter and we find they really bounce back and reward you well. You really want to make sure you've left a few good growing tips on it though. Sunshine. All day sunshine. Yummy. Mm, it's pretty good. I reckon you've got a great lifestyle here, Melissa. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>